Have you ever watched someone do something that wasn't right and think to yourself, God's going to get you for that? In today's reading, Zephaniah informs several nations of their pending punishment. Hi, I'm Pastor John Sakra from Heights Christian Church. and What we are doing as a congregation is going through the Bible in five years. We invite you to join us wherever you are by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Six days a week, we will read a small part of Scripture and pull just one thing out of that portion to help us be more like Jesus. And then on Sunday, our services will be online on this very channel, and our sermons will be over the material that we read during the week. Back in 1975, George Jones and Tammy Wynette released a song titled, God's Gonna Get You For That. The song discusses the hypocritical actions of some of the church-going members in their community. While Zephaniah does not talk about members of a church, he does inform many nations about the pending punishments they will be receiving from God for their actions against His people. First, they were told to repent. Keep that in mind as we read chapter 2. Gather together yourselves. Gather together. Gather yourselves together, you shameful nation. Before the decree takes effect, on that day passes like wind-blown chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day that of the Lord's wrath comes upon you, seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, you who do what He commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. Gaza will be abandoned and Ashkelon left in ruins. At midday, Ashdod will be emptied and Ekron uprooted. Woe to you who live by the sea, you Carathite people. The word of the Lord is against you. Canaan, land of the Philistines. He says, I will destroy you and none will be left. The land by the sea will become pastures, having wells for shepherds and pens for flocks. The land will belong to the remnant of the people of Judah. There they will find pasture. In the evening they will lie down in the houses of Ashkelon. The Lord their God will care for them. He will restore their fortunes. I have heard the insults of Moab and the taunts of the Abonites, who insulted my people and made threats against their land. Therefore, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, the God of Israel, surely Moab will become like Sodom, the Ammonites like Gomorrah, a place of weeds and salt pits, a wasteland forever. The remnant of my people will plunder them. The survivors of my nation will inherit their land. This is what they will get in return for their pride, for insulting and mocking the people of the Lord Almighty. The Lord will be awesome to them. When He destroys all the gods of the earth, distant nations will bow down to Him, all of them in their own lands. You Cushites too will be slain by the, my sword. He will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria, leaving Nineveh utterly desolate and dry as the desert. Flocks and herds will lie down there, creatures of every kind. The desert owl and the screech owl will roost in her, on her columns. Their hooting will echo through the windows. Rubble will fill the doorways. The beams of cedar will be exposed. This is the city of revelry that lived in safety. She said to herself, I am the one, and there is none besides me. What a, what a ruin she has become, a lair for wild beasts, all who passed by her scoff and shake their fists. Did you see the first thing that was said to them was to repent? This is a common theme in the prophets. Repent or destruction is coming. However, in the New Testament, the recurring theme echoed the words that Christ said in Mark 1.15. And we will read that. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The recurring theme in the Gospels echoes the importance of repenting because time is short. While earthly destruction can happen, it is the eternal life that is at stake when Christ calls people to repent. We saw in Zephaniah 2, what was going to happen to those mentioned? 
We know from Romans chapter 6 that the wages of sin is death. But let's read the verse before it in addition to that verse to see what it says. This is Romans 6, 22 and 23. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We as believers, we are set free from sin. Many days it doesn't feel that way because we are an imperfect people and we still sin. However, we are free from sin and with the right attitude and the help of the Holy Spirit, we can overcome the habits that lead to sin. And I hope you got something out of today's devotion and I hope to see you again tomorrow.